calibration room, we moved on to a room full of engine blocks and other engine parts. Uh, what we'll do is we'll bring in a cylinder head or a block, uh, using looking at the stock fasteners, the production fasteners. Okay. We'll buy new factory fasteners, and we'll take those fasteners and we'll test them. We'll, we'll figure out how strong they are, how they were designed, and then we'll remeasure the head or block, and we'll see if there's an area where we can put more thread engagement or or maybe we need to uh, change the undercut diameter thread to allow uh, allow for more expansion uh, but but everything we do now in a new kit we bring the actual engine or part product onto the shop floor and we do the r d on it here in house so are any of these motors um giving you maybe the next product that arp is going to make definitely we've got uh, uh the, the new ford coyotes coming in uh, we've had a we've got a flathead V8. The flatheads are very big in the uh, in the hot rods. are coming back. Mm -hmm. Not that they ever really left, but there's more than ever. And so when when they design a new aftermarket head, or even a Ford flathead, we'll we'll make up a new stud kit for that. While at ARP, I thought it'd be a good time to ask some questions about how to properly torque bolts and fasteners. Well, as you know, everything is variant on the lubricant. What torque spec you would use varies on what lubricant you would use. Okay. okay? Uh, we recommend one lubricant with our product, and that's the ARP Ultra Torque, the new lubricant that we use, because it's very consistent in preloading. Okay. Uh, it'll preload within 98 to 100% of its original uh, spec that we provide, mm -hmm. and it will retain its value within plus or minus 5% in all remaining cycles. Okay. Okay. So consistency and repeatability is the key for any application. Okay. What we do is we yield the faster. That means we bring it to failure, mm -hmm. and then we calculate it 75% off based off its failure rate or where it fails at. Okay. Now, I have seen uh, a few engine builders use a torque wrench, and they'll tighten the bolt, and the torque wrench will click. Then they back it off, and they retorque it again, and it goes a little further. Are we passing the yield, or what? What's Not necessarily. There? Some of that is they want to um, you have composite gaskets that compress as you compress the parts together. Okay. And sometimes what they want to do is they want to seat the gasket, then they retorque it, and then they get a better feel for the second torque around. We finally made it to the last step of ARP's manufacturing facility, where they black oxidize the bolts. So once these look finished, are they ready to install? Yes, they are. They have them black oxide coated. Uh, all the threads have been rolled. Uh, they're ready to go over to the shipping department and go out to the customer. How long does the black coating last? If you keep it oiled, the coating will last forever. Okay. If it gets out in the moisture and the weather, it'll start. you'll start to see a little bit of a haze on it, really, and, and you'll, you'll think something's up, but it is rusty. So basically, we shouldn't build a motor expecting to have black ARP bolt heads, because they're not going to stay that way. No, we'd recommend painting them. So we made it through all the processes and quality control tests to have our finished bolt. Now it seems it would be simple as packaging it up and shipping it out, but you would be wrong to think that. In fact, ARP's labeling and packaging process is just as precise. As the parts come in, they go over to one of the, uh, the packing tables and the, the employees, they, they have the bill of materials pulled up, uh, all the boxes are built, and they put the parts into the boxes and instructions, lubricant, uh, they pack it tightly so the parts don't move around and, 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 and ding, get themselves dinged up as they're in transit. Okay. And then they seal the box. Okay. Uh, this is our skin pack line. Uh, all of the, you know, the, the head stud, main bolts, rod mm -hmm. bolts, uh, they all require different packaging. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a rod bolt kit or an intake fastener kit or pan set kit, it'll get on a skin card. Uh, the employees lay out the parts. Uh, we have kind of set the, when I say planogram or whatever, how the how the parts are laid out on the cards, and then they come through and they get skin packed. There's a label that's gonna have who packed the kit, mm -hmm. the date that it was packed, the weight of the kit, so if there's, and the weight is, it comes out, we do that to the smallest uh, component, or lightest component in the kit, so usually it's a washer, so if the kit was missing one washer, it would show up and there'd be a green and red light on the scale, and it won't print the label. So, and then the lot number is the actual, that, that, that goes back to all the components are under that lot number now. And what's the point of all that uh, numbers and documentation? Uh, primary reason is if, if down the road the customer has a, has a problem or an issue with the kit, we can ask them to look at that number that's on the side of the box, and then we can trace back who built the kit, uh, what components, who actually did the work, who rolled the threads, who ground the part. Um, 
when the raw material came into the plant, which heading, uh, which one of the heading machines was used to head the part and form the part. So we can we can really see if, if something went wrong. We can trace back and and and, and see what happened or where where it started. So Chris, what I like most about this room is the uh, largest bolt bin I've ever seen. Yes, yes. <laughs> the components that we use on a more regular basis are pulling from every day. We have in our bolt bin on the wall, and it has every size quarter through half inch uh, in hex and 12 point in stainless and chromoly. Chris, we're taking this whole thing with us. That is just accessory bolts. So if you pictured your bolt bin at your shop, yeah. this is the, the world's largest killer's bolt bin. <laughs> Even though ARP is a giant world-class manufacturing company that relies heavily on machines, everyone still feels like a big family. The father and son that started the company, they still work in the, in the shop every day. Uh, they can run most every single piece of equipment in the shop, which helps, helps in the quality and the production and keeping the cost right. The fact that they can walk out and they can listen to a machine or see a machine, they, they, they can tell if something's not right, if a setup's not right, or, or if it's taking too long to machine apart, they can fix it. I really appreciate that your products are made in the USA, in Southern California, and I think you even use mostly American-made equipment, is that correct? Yes, yes, most of our equipment is made right here in the U.S., and we are proud of the fact that all the ARP fasteners are made here in Southern California in the U.S.A. Where can we find ARP fasteners? ARP fasteners are available worldwide through distribution, uh, your local engine builder or parts house, or you can go to arp-bolts.com. We have a, a, distribu a distributor's referral list on there, as well as a, a lot of tech. There's a 28-page tech in the front of the catalog. In fact, Kevin did a, did a whole review of the catalog several years ago. Yes, um, I think we need a new one, though. <laughs> he got it all gooped up. Well, we'll go ahead and get you one before you leave, but if you do need a catalog, you can go to arp-bolts.com and request a free one. Well, I look forward to reading it and learning a whole lot more about this really fascinating process. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming out.